Hello, this is Johnny Rogers with Ukrainian Relief Fund. I just want to thank all of my supporters, everybody who has donated to get the vehicle. We exceeded the requested amount, I think by double. Uh, we got one vehicle and then I was planning on getting another one, but the first vehicle immediately broke. It's a problem of getting used vehicles. Even if it's inspected, you can have problems. Long story short, I received it in two wheel drive. I got over the border and immediately there was a bit of a, a muddy area that I had to go through. So then I stopped and put it from two wheel drive to four high. It seemed to be fine and everything. And then I went on the main road. There was a, a dash indicator light that popped on blinking at me. And then all of a sudden there was a smell of gear oil. Then the front differential blew up, absolutely locked up, blew up. It was in the middle of the night. <laughs> it was, then I had to address that. We disconnected the front continued their current mission on two-wheel drive. We met some people, dropped off the supplies that were donated with the truck to a distribution place and then continued all the way forward to another location. Or, oh, and so instead of buying a vehicle, I was able to fund the, the fuel for another large panel van for this one mission. And uh, it was pretty helpful but like the thing we don't have the van anymore we used the some of the funds to buy tanks of fuel and buy food and medical supplies for this town uh or a few towns that's one of the problems with this kind of work what i try to do to buy the tools instead of have somebody else do it buy a piece of kit that i know is going to last a long time i don't want to post about time frames because it can put my life and the people's lives that I work with in danger it is a reality that people are actively trying to hurt us because whatever they're um they want to hurt volunteers to make sure that other volunteers don't come here it is a legitimate risk so times and places and time frames, timelines of the places, I'm not gonna post in chronological order. I am gonna change that around for safety concerns. About the Navara, the Nissan Navara, I'm gonna do a, like a walk around explanation of what it is, what I've done to improve it, and the decisions I made to get tools to work on it instead of just pay somebody else to work on it. I myself pulled the axles and then I had the front diff pulled out of it. Now that I have the tools, I can fix this vehicle and other vehicles. So did a few other modifications, we'll get into that. I'm in the middle of trying to help some civilians that are in the gray zone. There's a front line on the news, Bakhmut's real big and Kharkiv and Zaporizhia is always on the news, but there's a really, really long front line and there's a lot, a lot of people in the towns in between the newsworthy places. So we've been doing exploratory missions to kind of see who's out there, who needs help, what kind of help they need and connect them with the help. So that's our, that's what my main mission has been, kind of do head counts and figure out who's where. What we've been doing is going where people won't go. Older gentlemen, dentures broke. So he's one hour, 45 minutes away from the nearest dentist that can do that. Nobody is willing to go in there, drive him to his appointment, I'm getting ready to do that. I'm going to document this trip, and it's a really good demonstration and explanation of the barriers of getting people assistance, and then also the complex environment in the gray zone, because these people don't want to leave their homes, but also they create problems for ZSU and humanitarians me bringing them help reinforces their bad behavior and i say bad behavior of like you're in a in the conflict area like you need to move back but then they're one of their main concerns is they have nowhere to go internally displaced refugees all the places are filled that i'm aware of 
that we're searching for places for these people to go. There's hundreds and thousands, uh, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds, maybe even thousands that we've seen and met. These are just civilians that don't want to leave their home. There's a few reasons. I mean, there's no home insurance, no insurance of any sort. And if they leave, they may never come back. They may never get their stuff back that they've worked their whole life on having it's their home and they don't want to leave and it's understandable it's a very complex thing so well, i am really i want to have a kind of like a cinematic easily consumable type of a thing it's very difficult to to uh it's very very difficult to film plan your shots and everything and remember to capture these moments and sometimes your equipment just doesn't work so it, it's a challenge so rant over that's what i'm currently doing thank you again for all of your support please continue following us here on youtube um help is on the way ua.com help is on the way ua.com our instagram please follow every, like share all this stuff it does help please donate if you can uh, the monthly subscriptions uh, are really, really helpful. And yeah, so we're going to continue our efforts here. Uh, thank you for the support. Anyways, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for helping and supporting. And please, please, please continue to support um, what we're doing. Thank you. Oh, and Ryan McBeth, I do have a Ukrainian bottle of whiskey for you, so... Um, we'll figure out how to get that to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks.